So today we're going to talk a little bit about the announcement that NVIDIA made in June 2nd, that was this past Sunday, and how that relates to the future of building agents. Now we're not going to go over the whole announcement, but I know that some of the questions that you guys have had have been related to whether or not the skill of building agents is going to be something that's going to stick for a while, or if it's just going to be a kind of skill that's going to be pretty much useless in the near future because of how fast the AI technology is moving. And I think after you watch this clip, you're going to feel pretty safe towards continuing to educate yourself both in this skill and the AI technologies, or rather the software technologies around it. So let's check this out and then we can talk about it for a bit. Very few people know how to write programs. Almost everybody knows how to break down a problem and assemble teams. Every company I believe in the future will have a large collection of NIMS. So NIMS is the service that NVIDIA is basically pitching during this conference, which as you watch this, just think of NIMS as LLMs. And you would bring down the experts that you want. You connect them into a team. You don't even have to figure out exactly how to connect them. You just give the mission to an agent, to a NIM to figure out who to break the tasks down and who to give it to. The leader of the application, if you will, the leader of the team would break down the task and give it to the various team members. The team members would perform their task, bring it back to the team leader. The team leader would reason about that and present an information back to you. Just like humans. This is in our near future. This is the way applications are gonna look. Now, of course, we could interact with these AI services with text prompts and speech prompts. However, there are many applications where we would like to interact with what, what is otherwise a human-like form. We call them digital humans. NVIDIA has been working. So at that point, he starts talking a little bit more about this other collaboration, and he gives a little more depth of this example. But if you're listening for a bit, if you're paying attention, I'm sure the way that he was describing it sounded a lot like the agent framework, which I'm sure you've become familiar with, even if you've built only a few projects. And if we look at this diagram that he was showcasing in the presentation, we pretty much see that as well. We see the agent, which is linked to the LLM. We see multiple agents, again, talking to multiple LLMs. And then here we just see an example of a rag retrieval from a vectorized database. Now we're gonna talk a little bit more about what NIMS is, but just from this small segment of the presentation, which is the latest news from NVIDIA's products and services that they're pretty much trying to get shareholders to get hyped up about. Based on this, I would say that the agent framework is here to stay at least for now. Now, so you can have a little bit better context on what NIMS is, which by the way, NIMS is a service that NVIDIA is offering. It's not a piece of software, it's not a new LLM, it's not a piece of hardware for that matter, but rather it's a service that they're gonna be offering to, I'm assuming what are enterprise level clients or people that are gonna be able to afford it because I don't think it's gonna be cheap. But let's take a look at the current agent framework that we've been using, Career AI, and how we've been running those projects as of now. We basically create our career AI project, right? Set up our agents or tasks. I'm sure you know all that by now. And we pretty much only have two options for the way that we want to use LLMs. We can either do API calls to LLMs that are hosted by someone else, in most cases, either OpenAI or Grok. Or if you have the hardware for it, whether you have one of those $6,000 MacBooks or you have a small to medium sized company with some data centers or maybe using cloud services. While you do have the option of running some of these open source models, the drawback from these, which I just labeled DIY, because to some extent you are kind of like putting a lot of this together, is that they're not secure. If you built an application for this, you can have to go through the process of setting up authentication for it. And also you have to make sure that it's compliant, especially if you're doing something that's related to the medical field, you need it to be HIPAA compliant. I think that's what it's called. Another drawback is that the application or the environment that it's running on, depending on the hardware that you're using, might not be optimized or configured to run with the LLM in the way that you want to use it. And because you're having to figure out a lot of these configurations, and again, depending on the type of application you're building, there might be other tools or applications that need to be built alongside with it. Then that also that makes it not easily deployable and by extension, not easily scalable. And for all of these pains that you have right here, that's pretty much where NIMS or NVIDIA Inference Microservices comes in. NVIDIA is pretty much saying like, hey, we know about these headaches. We're gonna give you the pre-trained models, which are open source and you can pick the one you want. We're gonna give you enterprise level security because they know how important this is to large companies. They're saying, because we're the AI guys, we're pretty much the ones that made AI possible. We're also gonna be able to provide you with the optimal configurations, which again, they're already providing that for you. And they're also providing deployment containerization, which is just another way of saying that 
whether you're launching your limb in a data center on the cloud or your own set of GPUs or machines, they're pretty much standardizing the functionality of it or the configurations and dependencies that it needs so that it runs efficiently across all platforms. And of course, the containerization is pretty much what makes it scalable. Now, just to give you guys a little bit more context in containerization, because I know some of you are just starting out in your technology journey or your AI journey, I did set up this graph just to kind of walk you through where NIMS comes into play in terms of crew AI crew development or crew AI applications, because I know that's a lot of what you've been focusing on in the previous months. So pretty much when you started building crew AI projects, you start out here in this part on the far left, right? You wanted to design a coup, you had heard about agents, but you weren't familiar with the technology, but you probably started out with an idea. Maybe you wanted a financial analysis. Maybe you wanted somebody to help you find and book vacations. Again, you probably started out with the concept. So as you got more interested in it, you started building crews. Maybe you started with a tutorial, but at that point you get introduced to the Python programming language and also API keys. After that, you started getting a little more deep into the weeds. Whether you had a lot or a little bit of programming experience, the thing that started making your crew work better was the custom tools, which again, maybe you found these from another user, or maybe you looked a little more into Python programming so that you could make your own more in-depth features from crew AI, such as callback functions. And you start learning more about how to make different API calls for other services. And if you really went in deep, you start looking into databases and database queries so that you could save the information that your crew AI project Project was producing. This is where it starts getting a little bit trickier because at this point you went a little more in depth into the details and specifics of software development, programming languages, and depending on how comfortable you were with those previous to starting this, that's probably where you've been spending a decent amount of your time in learning. So now we move on to integrating a crew. So at this point you've built a very efficient crew that does a pretty complex task but now you're thinking about connecting this to other software, other programs, other services. This is where you start looking into how to turn your crew AI project into a web app. This is where you start looking into API endpoints. This is where you start looking into web request endpoints, into webhook responses. And this is where hosting on web servers came into play, even if it was all being done locally. So now we come to the last part of this journey, which this is honestly a very short list, but we're not gonna get into the details of this, but this is pretty much where NIMS comes into play. It's gonna be the deployment of a crew, or rather deployment into production. So at this point, you gotta decide the infrastructure of your project. Are you gonna deploy it on the cloud? Do you have your own data centers? Are you gonna use Google Cloud or AWS? This is where you decide what your tools are gonna be for CI CD, or what they call continuous integration, continuous deployment. This is important because if you're taking your application to production and you need to make an update, you need to make some changes to it, well, you can't just completely take the application offline, do the changes, and then bring it back up. That would not be ideal for any company scenario. And as the name implies, these are the tools you can use to have both continuous integration and also continuous deployment. A big factor to deploying to production is also going to be the security aspect of it. And of course, containerization. In a simple scenario where containerization is important is, let's say, you start out with your application that you launched to production and you had it in your own web servers that, you know, maybe you just had a small set of servers that you had in your garage. Well, what's going to happen when you from a Google Cloud server to an AWS server? How are you going to make sure that the installation of all the dependencies, all the libraries, and pretty much all the tools that your application needed in order to run are not only compatible, but also available in the next environment where you're going to be setting this up in? Well, this is where Docker images come in. If you've worked with Python, think about how when you've worked in your career AI projects using Poetry to handle all the dependencies, in a similar manner, you would be using a Docker image to handle the configurations for your application. So basically, when you deploy an application, if you don't have a way to containerize and standardize the things it needs in order to run, this can turn into a huge headache when it comes to deploying on different servers or across multiple servers. I know a lot of you guys have been putting a lot of time and energy in building these projects, and hopefully this gives you a little bit of peace of mind that agents are here to stay and that skill that you're learning is still very, very valuable. I really want to thank all of you guys that have shared your projects with me. I know those conversations start out with you reaching out for my help on your project, but honestly, when I see all the amazing stuff that you guys are building, it really helps me learn about Korea AI and its potential a lot more faster than I would if I was just locked in my room making these projects on my own. So thank you for that. And if you're looking to start building Korea AI projects, or maybe you have started but feel like you're falling a little bit behind or maybe you're not moving as fast as you would want to, I'm going to leave a link in the description for my school community where you'll be able to collaborate and share ideas with other very talented and very ambitious individuals. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.